friends, thanks for joining me again. Well, I am super excited to share with you my new recipe for homemade sunscreen. I have been working on this recipe for a really long time and I'm really excited to share it with you because there's been so much controversy over sunscreen as to whether it's better for you than not using any sunscreen because it protects your skin from the uh, harmful UV rays or if it's worse because there's so many different chemicals in it that are just as bad as the sun. So, um, all that aside, <clears throat> I felt like there was basically two choices. We could either pay, you know, the eight, ten dollars a bottle for this stuff um, and get the unhealthy kind, or literally the healthy natural stuff was like literally seventy dollars for about an eight ounce bottle. About half the size of this is seventy five dollars on Amazon for the really healthy natural stuff. Well, you know me, I'm always on the quest for finding a way that we can have our cake and eat it too, if you will. Um, so I have found a recipe that is effective, it's natural, and it's healthy, and yet it's not expensive. This bottle I just made uh, is worth, it's 16 ounce bottle, and it cost me about $2 per batch to make. Of course, you do have to buy some ingredients up front in order to make it, but as you'll see um, as we go through the recipe, a lot of these ingredients are things that we use in a lot of other um, you know, things that we've done. Stuff like, you know, homemade chapstick or homemade lotion, you know, the um, deodorant, things like that. All of these ingredients are things that we've used before. So they may just be things if you're already starting out with doing the all natural homemade items, you may have some of these items already. And so some of these items are, um, you know, there is some wiggle room, you can choose different types of things and I'll explain why and how you can do that. And some of these are really necessary. I like to give recipes that have a lot of wiggle room for people so that they can, you know, change it up how they want to and whatnot. So if, as I'm going through the ingredients, if I list an ingredient, um, I'll explain why it is it's needed and if there's any alternatives and the purpose for it in the lotion as well, this uh, sunscreen lotion. That way you can know why it is we're adding all these things and if it's truly necessary or not. So I've come up with a really simple and easy to make recipe. So let's go ahead and get started now. All right, friends, here we go. Let's get started. The first thing I have in here is a Pyrex dish. Many of you will be excited to know that I have, you know, good things come to those who wait. I don't have to use that plastic thing anymore. I got this Pyrex one for free, and so I'll be using that this time. So into this dish, I have added a quarter cup of the emulsifying wax. Uh, the recipe is going to look very similar to just making the regular homemade hand lotion. So yep, the uh, emulsifying wax. Now I have a quarter cup of oil, which in this recipe I'm going to be using slaf safflower oil, excuse me, and organic flaxseed oil. I'm going to be using about equal parts of each to make up my quarter cup. And so with that, um, and the oil, the emulsifying wax and oil, it's very much like a normal ordinary hand lotion recipe. The thing that we're going to do that is a little different this time is that we're going to add some beeswax. The beeswax is actually going to make the lotion sticky so that it will stick to us, um, you know, when we're going swimming. So if this is something that you want to have uh, be water resistant, definitely have to add the beeswax. And if you have no need for this to be water resistant, then there's no need to add it. So with that, with the emulsifying wax and the oils with the beeswax in there, I'm going to go ahead and add some water to this pot, just enough to make it, uh, you know, uh, cover where the oils would be down there. And then I'm gonna make this into basically a makeshift double boiler. Stick this on the oven, or excuse me, the stove, and we'll go ahead and stir this together until it's all melted, and I'll show you what that looks like in a few seconds. So this is what it looks like. It takes a few seconds. Just keep stirring and stirring until everything in there is all melted. Okay, so here it is, all melted, nice and smooth. So the next step is to add the preservatives, which is not, in, in my opinion, going to be optional this time. When it comes to making a sunscreen, the sunscreen is likely going to be packed along with us when we're going on our little outings and things. It's going with us to the zoo and to the farm and, you know, just to the pool, everywhere. So, plus the warm weather makes it so there really isn't the ability for us to keep it in the fridge all the time. Um, you know, when we're working in the garden, bring it outside, whatever. So basically, I really do think that this time, you know, last time for the homemade hand lotion, the preservatives were optional. This time I would really like to highly recommend that they're not optional. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of the vitamin E tablets to help keep that, um, you know, preserved. And then the other thing is going to be the citric acid. 
Citric acid is going to help lower the pH and make it much harder for it to go bad. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. And then another third optional ingredient would be uh, essential oils. And this is totally optional. If you want it to be scented a certain way, that's fine. Um, you know, I've even thought about, but I haven't actually done it yet. Um, maybe adding an essential oil like um, something that would repel insects and things like that. Something like uh, essential oil, like citronella or something, would be a good one to choose if you wanted to repel like mosquitoes. So then you would have a sunscreen slash mosquito repelling uh, lotion all in one. So there you go. This, at this point is where you're going to add your preservatives and your essential oils. Okay, I got it all added, all the little um, preservatives and everything added. I've chose to not use the uh, essential oil this time. The next step is the same as the uh, homemade hand lotion. I just use the regular water from the double boiler. Um, usually it's a little warm. I throw my you know, thermometer in here and it's usually around like 140 degrees or so, but we want it to be about 120 degrees. So I usually just add a little bit of cold water until I get it to about the right temperature. This time it's a little lower than that, about 118, which is totally fine and falling, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out my water, uh, one and a quarter cups of water, and I'm going to add it to my lotion. Okay, I just added the water, went ahead and just added that in there and mix it around a little bit. Uh, at this point, it does, well, this time it looks a little bit uh, on the yellowy side, maybe a little bit on an off-white type of color. And that's because of the flaxseed oil. Uh, it's kind of an orangey color. If you didn't want your uh, sunscreen to be kind of off-white and would prefer it to be like a white color, I would use a lighter color of oil like this one. But, you know, you can use a lot of different types of oils. Um, just refer back to that video what oils are best for your homemade products and that'll explain all the different ones that you can use and you know some of the benefits and drawbacks to each and so on. Again I just used these two in my recipe today. So at this point uh, you basically made a lotion basically a uh, water resistant lotion because the only thing that's been different with this recipe so far versus the homemade hand lotion is that this one has beeswax in it to make it water resistant. So how we're going to actually make this into a sunscreen is the next step here. But we have to let this cool first. We can't go ahead and add the next ingredients until this is cooled because as this cools it's going to thicken. And it needs to thicken in order to keep the next ingredients, which are going to be zinc oxide and another one, uh, suspended in the lotion there. So we're going to go ahead and just wait, you know, 10-20 minutes or so. And I'll let you know how long it was that I had to wait, and then we'll let this cool off until it's the right consistency, and we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, almost finished. I went ahead and cleaned up, and uh, there's actually a trick that I learned since the last time I posted the video on the homemade hand lotion, and that's actually, I take my pot, I pour out the leftover water that I didn't need to add to the lotion, and then I put some cold water in it, and I put the whole lotion inside the cold water. And this helps to cool down the lotion faster. This is especially useful because with the uh, beeswax in this lotion recipe, it kind of forms a skin on the top. So what we actually have to do, uh, I have found, is that you just kind of keep it, you keep stirring it. And now, like, continuously, you don't have to sit and babysit it constantly or anything. I just kind of clean up a little bit, stir it, do a few dishes and stir it. You know, it doesn't take a constant babysitting. But you do have to just be around and available to check on its progress and whatnot. And so as you can see, this has cooled quite a bit, and it's much thicker, much closer to what a lotion um, would normally be like. And so now we get to go ahead and move on to the last step, and that's to add what's actually going to make it to be an SPF. So we're going to add zinc oxide and aloe vera. Now, how much zinc oxide and aloe vera we add is actually, actually not the aloe vera, but how much zinc oxide we add is what's going to give it its SPF. So what I have found is that for about every tablespoon of zinc oxide I add, it gives this lotion recipe about an SPF of 5. So you can custom make this to whatever SPF you want to. If you wanted to make this an SPF 20, you would add 4 tablespoons of zinc oxide. If you wanted to make a 35, you know, you would just go accordingly from there. I'm going to go ahead and make this an SPF 35 today. I do recommend, though, that you get it, you know, somewhere between the 20 and 35 range because anything below 20 doesn't seem to be too effective. I mean, I'm also pretty white-skinned, so uh, I burn easily. And everything above 35, 
you know, when you put the lotion on it, gives it kind of a white color to it, and you have to rub quite a bit to make it go clear. So um, anything above 35, it can be a little bit, a bit of a hassle to have to rub that much to get the lotion to absorb. So I'm going to go ahead and add, e actually I add equal parts because how much zinc oxide you add to this, you're going to need to add one tablespoon of aloe vera to balance it out. Because if we just added all the zinc oxide, what I found was that all that zinc oxide being added to the lotion gave it too thick of a consistency. So if I'm going to add four tablespoons of zinc oxide to give it an SPF 20, I need to add four tablespoons of aloe vera concentrate to give it, you know, that right consistency and so on. And so since I'm, since I'm going to be doing an SPF of 35, I'm actually going to be adding seven tablespoons of zinc oxide and seven tablespoons of aloe vera. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that out and add it and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so there it is, all finished. Added the zinc oxide and the uh, aloe vera and it's nice, smooth and easy to use consistency. Very similar to what uh, you would get with a normal lotion and once you stir it up really good there shouldn't be any chunkiness or anything like that. Now the last step obviously is going to be to go ahead and put it in a bottle. Um, sometimes people would choose to use any kind of cleaned out you know, plastic bottle or whatever you have around. This time I would highly recommend using an empty sunscreen bottle and not just any kind of bottle because the thing is we're going to be taking this to you know wherever it is we're going and we don't want you know um, the other moms to be looking at us wondering why we're putting some shampoo on our children when we, when we put it in a shampoo bottle and so especially if you're going to be traveling with it or going anywhere where someone could be checking your bag and wondering why you're bringing in shampoo you know, if you have a bottle of sunscreen, they're going to obviously know what that means when they open the bottle or if they were to look at or smell it or anything. Or when you go to actually use it, you could actually put this on your children or whatever. You know, it's going to be obvious that it's just an ordinary lotion. It's going to look just the same as what everybody else is using. So, yep, that would be my last um, recommendation is that you put this in a empty bottle that's a sunscreen bottle. Um, but other than that, the thing that I really like about this recipe is not only that it's so healthy, it's like the high-end uh, sort of lotions at a lower-end price because this is so inexpensive to put together yourself. It's really easy to make as you saw. It only took me a few minutes uh, to put this all together and it really wasn't difficult at all. But the zinc oxide makes it so it has the SPF and by adding the aloe vera to counteract the thickness that the zinc oxide adds to the recipe, it also makes it so that the aloe vera is a light, a light moisturizer which is really useful in the summertime because that sun can be drying to your skin and also this is like a, like a after sunburn type lotion and sunscreen all in one so instead of having a sunscreen that you put on and then like an aloe vera gel that you put on after you're burnt uh, to go ahead and cool that sunburn and to keep it from burning worse you know say you forget to put your sunscreen on you go out and do some gardening and oops you accidentally got burnt. You just put this sunscreen on. It's going to help cool the sunburn. It's going to keep the sunburn moist with the aloe vera there that's in this. And it's going to help protect your sun, your skin from getting further damaged by the sun because it has the SPF. So this is actually a sunscreen and an afterburn lotion all in one. So I really hope you enjoy this recipe. I really hope you try it out. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Frugal Green Girl. We'll see you next time. Getting ready to go to the pool. Putting our sunscreen on. We're gonna go test this out. See how good it works. All done swimming. Let's check it out and see if they got sunburnt. Let me see your arm. Your arm doesn't look red at all. What about yours? No redness anywhere. Faces? I don't see any sunburning. I think this stuff works really good. <laughs>